Now you saw in that video what defines success at the Ironman Triathlon. One day, one race, and only one champion. If I could swim 2.4 miles in the open ocean in about 50 minutes, get out of the water, bike 112 miles, averaging 25 miles an hour through very hot, windy, desolate lava, average, and 25 miles an hour, that's what Lance Armstrong had to average to win his final Tour de France victory. Get off of my bike at 12.30 in the afternoon, the hottest point on the hottest of all the Hawaiian islands, run a marathon, 26.2 miles, averaging six minutes and 10 seconds every single mile, I would be the Ironman champ. <laughs> Anything less than that, and somebody else was gonna walk away with the title. So what I would like to do today is to share with you three very simple but powerful tools that not only helped me win that amazing race six times, but tools that can help you achieve the great dreams that you have for yourselves. And before I go any further, I want to highlight what those tools are. The first is to clarify the work that your goals are asking you to do to accomplish the success that you are after. What is the work that your goals are asking you to do to achieve great success? Having an answer to that is what will change somebody from being very busy to being very effective. And certainly in the world today, being effective is a very priceless commodity to have in your corner. It was not until I asked myself, what is the training that the Ironman wants me to do to be the champion, that I actually went from training a lot to training effectively. The second tool that I'll share with you today is, is to have a willingness to adjust your strategy based on how it's working in that very unpredictable environment called the real world. I mean, let's face it, things are changing so fast now, and what may have gotten us success in the past may not be what will help us to secure our dreams in the future. And we need to have a willingness to make adjustments based on that reality. And you'll hear through my final story today the adjustments that I needed to make as a 37-year-old athlete to become the oldest champion of that race were very dramatic. The third and final tool that I'll share with you today is to have an absolute commitment to completion. Now, what does that mean? A commitment to comp completion says, I will do that day-to-day -day work that often seems very unglamorous that will indeed carry me to the great dreams that I have set out for in achieving them. As an example from my industry, triathlon, I have to be a good swimmer. So in January, when I start back my, in my training, I throw myself in a pool, I swim up one side, I do a flip turn, I come back the other side. In about 35 seconds, I have seen the entire swim course that I am going to do about 50,000 times over the course of that season very unglamorous, but each one of those laps is what will prepare me to be a great champion. A commitment to completion says, I'm not going to join the herds of people who are trying to come up with excuses why the environment today isn't conducive to doing great business. I'm going to be one of those ones who's leading the way, coming up with the solutions to indeed achieve a high level of success. A commitment to completion says, I will stop for a moment and I will reflect and ask myself, what is it inside here that has meaning to me, meaning to me in my heart about the things that I'm putting all this effort into? I mean, there are several thousand of you in this room, and that means there are several thousand great reasons why you are doing what you, need, what you are doing. But to understand what that is so that it carries you past all of those challenges along the way. Use that vision to carry you past those first five years when history shows that often Four out of five of you may want to quit. Use that vision. What is it that has importance to you so that you do indeed become great in your industry? You achieve those great successes. A commitment to completion says, I'm going to stick with it long enough so that I change from working hard, trying to figure out how to be successful, to get to that point where I'm working hard because I know what it takes to be successful. Clarify, adjust, and complete. If any one of these three tools had been missing in my preparation for the Ironman, I wouldn't be standing in front of you today. Now, out of those thousand athletes, there's one that I need to highlight for you. It was an athlete named Dave Scott. In 1982, Dave was the best Ironman distance triathlete in the world. He'd won the race once. He was coming back hoping to win his second title. Now, Dave does everything right. He had the best equipment that money could buy, the best technology at the time. He had an impeccably smart training program. He was fit, more fit than anybody, without a doubt. He was 
almost neurotic about his diet, because he, he knew the better he ate, the better he would perform. As an example, in 1982, Dave Scott was a vegetarian, but he knew that endurance athletes needed a lot of protein. So to get the protein his body needed, he ate a lot of cottage cheese. Huh. Well, I figure cottage cheese is pretty healthy. It's on you know, every diet platter in the restaurants. Dave Scott felt like cottage cheese had too much fat in it. So to optimize the performance of his cottage cheese before he ate it, he would stick it in a strainer and he would rinse it. <laughs> if I'm going to win the Ironman, I've got to beat a guy who's willing to rinse his cottage cheese. <laughs> Now there is only one human being on this planet who has beaten me in that race, Dave Scott. So as I prepared for my fifth Ironman, I asked myself, what can I do that will get me more prepared than everybody else, including this great athlete? And I said, I'm going to out-train everyone. You know that, that feeling like if I just outwork everybody else, I will achieve the highest level of success? Certainly. Success requires a lot of hard work, as you have heard already tonight. However, it has to be the right kind of work. But I said, I'm going to do everything I can. From January through October, my training season, I did enough swimming, cycling, and running to add up to doing 15,000 miles of training. 125 Ironmans worth of swimming, biking, and running went down in my logbook. Every single person in this building has had to deal with setbacks, with points in their lives where they felt like they did I did the right kind of work, but I fell short of my goals. But that's really just a test of our commitment of completion, isn't it? Are we just going to give up? Or are we going to stand back up, make the adjustments necessary, and take our dreams all the way to completion? I was at a crossroads. My family, my friends, the press, everybody was saying, you know what, Mark? You can beat Dave Scott elsewhere. You can win races in other places. Don't go back. You're not cut out for this. This is a test of completion, isn't it? Where is that vision? Where is that dream? What will carry us forward when we have, have these crossroad moments? And I reflected and I realized, you know what? I don't know if I can be the champ, but I know that walking the marathon is not my best race. I need to go back at least one more time and try to have my best performance. But I certainly need to do something different. And this is where I had to employ those three tools that I talked about in the very beginning. Now, if things aren't working out, there really are only two general kinds of adjustments we can make. One is to change the way we actually do our work, and the other is to ask ourselves, what is it about me as a person that might be holding me back from the success that I am after? Now, the how we do our work part is very industry specific. I had to get a little faster at swimming, cycling, and running. Those are probably not skills that will help you directly in the financial services industry. But the what is it that holds me back part, those are things that can affect us regardless of the challenge. Maybe we're afraid. Maybe we have self-doubt in the tough moments. Maybe that mental chatter starts, starts up when we really need a quiet, clear mind. And we need ways to work with that. But I didn't want to look in here first. First, I looked at the logbook and I said, you know what? My longest training day is six hours, but the Ironman takes eight. And I'm falling apart in those final two hours of the race. So as I prepared for my seventh Ironman, I designed five Ironman training days where I would swim 30 minutes, get out of the water, bike seven hours, get off of my bike, and run 30 minutes. That's an eight-hour training day. That's the kind of work that the Ironman wants me to do to become the champion. Those five days, they only added 10 extra hours onto my entire training year. That's less than two minutes a day. Would you be willing to work less than two minutes a day, if done in the right way, to achieve the greatest dream you have for your life? Absolutely, yeah. But I knew that I still had to ask myself, what is it about me as a person that's holding me back here? And so I just reflected on the Ironman, and I realized <laughs> I was afraid of that race. I was afraid of the wind on the bike that can be a headwind all the way out to the turnaround. And then when I see that sign that says turn around, so does the wind. It turns around and you have a headwind all the way back. That scares me. <laughs> I was afraid of the heat on the marathon. I ended up in the hospital because of it. And I was afraid of Dave Scott. I could not see myself winning unless he had a bad race. But there was no way Dave Scott was going to have a bad race in Hawaii short of me whacking him in, in the kneecaps with a pipe. Hmm. No. 
So I did bike rides into the wind to show myself, I can take that, I can do that. I don't have to be afraid of that. I did my long runs in the middle of the day, not in the morning or the evening when it's cooler. My training partners hated me, but I said, this is the work we need to do if we're going to have our best Ironman in October. And I practiced, at least in my mind, what I was going to say to Dave Scott when I saw him at the start. Dave, I hope you have your best race this year because I'm going to beat you. Now, that was easy to say in my living room in January. <laughs> but I knew in October he would be the toughest challenge. Around the half marathon point, we passed once again the final person who had been ahead of us, and we were on a pace that was going to shatter the world's record. But Dave was the stronger of us. Finally, it got so difficult to match his pace that I couldn't even hold on to the negative thoughts. And then the most amazing transformation took place. You see, in moments like that, the only thing we can change are the thoughts we tell ourselves, isn't it? It was too late for me to go back and ask myself, should I have done more training or less training? It was certainly too late to ask myself, should I have rinsed my cottage cheese? <laughs> but my mind went quiet. Something happened. You see, two days before the race, I was flipping through a magazine, just passing time, not reading what was there, until one page caught my attention. It was an advertisement for a workshop that was going to take place in Mexico, teaching about a way of life from the Indians in that area, the Huichol Indians. And I would later learn that the Weechel Indians have a saying that says, it's not over until it's over, meaning no matter how impossible our dreams or goals look right now, take that next step because it might come around for you. Keep taking that next step until you do realize those dreams that you have for yourself. I would also learn that the Weechel Indians value the ability to quiet their minds. They say, when our minds are quiet, then we get the answers to the big questions in life. In fact, Albert Einstein admitted, he said, the most amazing insights he received often came to him when he was riding a bicycle, when he was just daydreaming. Great goals happen with a lot of work and also a little bit of daydreaming, don't they? Well, anyway, what caught my attention in this ad was the two great shamans or medicine men that were going to lead this workshop. One was a 110-year-old Huichol Indian, Don Jose. And the other was his adopted grandson, Brant Secunda. And they had a look on their face that said, I am happy just to be alive. You know how that is when you wake up in the morning and you are happy just to, to get up at and jump out of bed? You know that no matter how chaotic the day is, it's going to be a good day. You're going to be able to deal with everything in the, that happens and comes across your path. And with that happiness, you're bringing positive energy. Fear, doubt, uh, stress melts away and you bring po everything positive that you have into that endeavor. Well, I needed that in that moment when Dave Scott was breaking me mentally. Finally, my mind went quiet. Don Jose's image ca came back to me and suddenly I was happy to be there. I mean, I was next to the best guy in the sport. There were still 13 miles to go in the marathon. Something might change and my energy began to come back. You heard through my stories, I, I got into the sport just with the dream to cross the finish line, but that changed when I was willing to do the work the Ironman was asking me to do to accomplish that success. And then finally, in 1989, won the first of those victories. And then the final victory came when I was able to pass that toughest test any of us can of completion. Are we willing to give 100% of what we have to give, even if it might look impossible to achieve our dreams? So I invite you to use these tools in your life. Don't take my word for it that they can work. What's the work that your goals are asking you to do this year to achieve them? What are your five Ironman training days going to look like? What are your, are your two extra minutes a day going to look like for you? Be willing to make those adjustments necessary to be truly effective and successful, not only in the way you do your work, but take the time to develop your inner strength, your inner character, so that you can bring more of you into this endeavor that you're putting your efforts into at Northwestern. And also, have that absolute commitment to completion, to sticking it out, taking that next step, even in the tough and impossible-looking moments. Because remember, impossible is just a solution that has yet to present itself.